um, which is catch up. But, it, you know, last show I was going to talk about this under wacky things coming out of the left. So this is a wacky thing coming out of the left. So in San Francisco, the uh, school board is engaged in the process of renaming 44 of the 125 schools in the district. And it is actually ask, doing a survey with parents about uh, changing the names and what names they would like and what names they don't like and, and so on. So, uh, you know, uh, it's COVID. Schools uh, are barely open. Uh, they're having challenges about how to do uh, education given COVID. Um, they're, they're, they're doing remote education. Um, uh, budgets of cities and counties and states are, are, are where most education dollars come from uh, are shrinking because of COVID. But the San Francisco School District has nothing else to do but to figure out how to change the names of the schools, right? Change the names of the schools because they're worried about these names of the schools. Now, I can understand if some of these schools were maybe named like, like, like the General Lee or the, or the Jefferson Davis schools, you know, these, these uh, Civil, Civil War, Southern, uh, you, you know, uh, post-slavery uh, fighters, people who fought for slavery. Okay, well, maybe, maybe one could, but 44 of these schools, this, this has raised some suspicion. They're not 44, uh, you know, pro-slavery people. You know, are they, are they really that many bad, bad, really, really bad people in uh, the, the San Francisco has schools named after them that uh, you'd want to change their school name? So, you know, so I got a list. I got a list of these schools, and it's, it's quite, quite interesting uh, to, to look at these. I mean, some of these, some of these I just don't know what's going on because there must be a backstory, but I don't know what it is. And then the San Francisco Chronicle, ran, uh, with its readers, ran a survey asking them which school names would they, of the 44, which of they, their schools would they want to change the name? So they ran a, a survey. So uh, here's some school names that San Francisco, in its great wisdom, is spending money, resources, brain power, uh, time, effort, in order to rename their schools, right? I mean, this one's a good one. I would rename the school. Um, the Diane Feinstein Elementary School. Can you believe that Diane Feinstein, the, the uh, uh, senator uh, from uh, California, has a school named after her? Exactly what has she done to deserve that great credit? But, but here we are, Diane Feinstein Elementary. The uh, voters in this poll that the San Francisco Chronicle ran uh, the number one uh, school name that they believed needed to be changed was indeed the Diane Feinstein uh, School. So it, it, at least the San Francisco Chronicle uh, readers seem to have good taste. Number 10 was uh, Junipero Serra Elementary. I don't know what Junipero Serra means, what it stands for, why anybody would have a problem with that. Herbert Hoover Middle School. Herbert Hoover, president of the United States, pretty bad president, not a good president. Maybe it was a racist, maybe something like that. Maybe that's what it is. I, I don't know it, why. I mean, other than he was a bad president, that he basically turned a recession into a depression because of all his bad policies. Um, yeah, that, that's a good reason not to have a middle school named after him. But I find it hard to believe that that would be it. All right, let's see. Uh, Francis Scott Key, don't know who that is. Uh, Alamo Elementary, they were offended by the Alamo. Standing up for liberty against Mexican oppression. Santa Ana was a dictator of Mexico, and uh, the, the Texas declared independence, and they fought the Alamo for, for the ca cause of liberty and freedom, and that's offensive to some people. But this one, on the, the flip side of the Alamo, is Noriega, E E S, Noriega School. Noriega, can you imagine the communist, the communist killer? Noriega, Nicaragua, who I think he's the president now of Nicaragua, is an authoritarian, but, but for many years a Marxist. They have an elementary school named after Noriega in San Francisco. Okay, that should be changed. Then comes Jefferson. Of course, Jefferson, slave owner, therefore can't tolerate Jefferson. Uh, so no Jefferson schools. We got we to gotta change that name. Then Sherman. This one is an inter interesting one. Sherman Elementary. Now, why don't they like Sherman? I mean, 
Oh, Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, well, she must be, she's obviously an American exceptionalist, and therefore she wrote the national anthem, so in America we know is this horrible country. So that's why they don't like her as, as, a, as a name, Francis as a he, uh, uh, name. But, but think about Sherman, right? If not for Sherman, we might still be fighting the Civil War. If not for Sherman, the South might have actually succeeded in seceding and, and the war would have ended maybe in a stalemate. Without Sherman, uh, there would have been slavery. Who knows for how long? I mean, Sherman won the Civil War. General Sherman, by going to the South, making the civilian population of the South suffer the consequences of the war they engaged in, he, yes, I get it, he, Francis is a he. As soon as I said it, I knew it. Um, sorry about that. But, uh, I mean, Sherman is a hero for anybody who doesn't believe, who believes slavery was an abomination. Sherman won the Civil War. Sherman ended slavery. Sherman is the one general in all of American history unequivocally is a good guy. Yes, he fought an unconventional war. That's why he won. He understood the war was not this, uh, 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 was not civilized. War needed to be won, and sometimes it was brutal. George Washington High School. They don't like George Washington. I mean, who do they like? Because they don't like Noriega either. So they don't like the communist Noriega, and they don't like George Washington, I guess, again, because he has slaves. But like, wow. I mean, this is American history. The greatest president maybe we've ever had was George Washington because um, he understood his role. Balboa. I don't know what the problem was with Balboa. McKinley. I don't, like, I don't like President McKinley. McKinley was not a good president. But I don't think I dislike him for the same reason they do. Garfield, is that also a president? Not a very good one. Um, I don't know much about the Garfield presidency. I'm going through some of these other names um, to see Stockton. Oh, Stockton was, was one of the robber barons, I guess, was a, a, a wealthy industrialist, I, I think. I, I'm not sure. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, they don't like Abraham Lincoln either. Maybe, maybe the school board of San Francisco actually does like slavery. I think the theme here is that they're actually pro-slavery. Because the two people most responsible for ending slavery in America, at least directly, are Abraham Lincoln and, and, and General Sherman. Monroe, they don't like President Monroe for some reason. Don't know, maybe, maybe he owned slaves or something, I don't know. Robert Louis Stevenson, the author. What's up with that? Um, Presidio? They don't like the Presidio? Right. Uh, all right, those are the ones I have. Anyway, I mean, not a single problematic name that I saw on there except presidents who I really, really, really don't like. Garfield's presidency was short. Tom says, yeah, uh, he was short. He was shot shortly into it. So what, what, what did he do that's so offensive that his name has to be taken off? Oh, this is the New Riega that was the ruler of Panama? I thought New Riega was, uh, was the communist. Um, isn't he the president of Nicaragua? Babo is a Spanish explorer. Okay, so I get it. Exploiter of the native people. That's why. Um, interesting. Anyway, this is what they've got to do with their time. This is what they've got to do with their efforts, right? I, I know that John Brown did more to fight slavery, maybe, maybe because he created the environment in which an Abe Lincoln could come up. But in terms of direct impact on slavery, the two people that had the most direct impact on slavery by winning that war was uh, Ortega is the one from Nicaragua. Ortega. Now, they have an Ortega school here, too. Wait, 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 wait. I saw Ortega here. I saw Ortega. It's definitely an Ortega school as well. So it's still, okay, so what I said about, about the other guy, move it on to Ortega, because they do it on Ortega and they want to change that school as well. I, you know, it, this is, just seems like crazy, um, crazy leftist, un, you know, uh, no real thought, random, um, yeah, generally, Anti, you know, anti people who supported slavery, but then you've got in Sherman and 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 and, uh, and Lincoln, 
And then, yeah, yeah, Jose Ortega Elementary. I assume Jose Ortega is the guy you guys are referring for. No, this is Daniel Ortega. So I'm not sure who Jose Ortega is. Yeah, maybe we can find out who. Anyway, um, the whole thing is, I'm sure Che Guevara will not be changed. They love Che Guevara. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is none, uh, no communist here that they want to change. It's just Americans. They, hate, they just hate America. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.